right, what's going on y'all? It's Corey with Current Angling, and in this video I want to cover some of my top winter baits for fishing here in the Low Country. Here, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. What I fish for mainly is redfish and speckled sea trout. A lot of these baits are going to be directed toward those two species. It's uh, the beginning of January here, and the water temperature this morning when I looked at it was about 53 degrees. One of my all-time favorites is, is a paddle tail. Now in the winter time, my favorite things to do is to downsize the paddle tail to this right here. This is a Z-Man Slim Swim. Now this is super effective because the Minhaden and the mullet have mostly moved out of the creeks. Not all, but mostly. And what's left is the more um, cold water tolerant glass minnows. They're around the oysters and the cover, so they're going to be there the entire winter long. And that's what the redfish and the sea trout are mainly going to be eating. So this perfectly mimics them. This color is one of my favorites. It's called opening night. And what I like about it so much is the glass minnows are semi-transparent -trans and that's exactly what this bait is. Being white and clear on the bottom, it mimics it perfectly. This is a finesse Texas Eye jig head. It has um, a separate range of motion from the hook to the lead eye there. So that can be on the bottom and this can be up in the current moving around. Another way I like to do it is to put it on a Ned Locks by Z-Man. So you put a bait on there and it will stand on its head. Uh, it gives a really good presentation and this has an exposed hook. So a lot of times I'm fishing this exposed hook in open water and if I want a little more depth, this is a uh, one fifth, one sixth, and then this right here is one tenth. I like to fish this in the grass in shallow areas. It's weedless when I skin hook the tip right there into the plastic. And then it's also really light at one tenth ounce. If I fish it in a foot or two feet of water, it's gonna stay in the water column pretty well without just diving and looking unnatural. It's gonna stay there and drift and whatnot and, and present itself for those very slow moving fish to come up and, and grab it. I have this lure tied on right now because as you can see, it's a really windy day, it's a clear day, it's a cold day. All of these things um, lead me to having a small profile soft plastic that I can either fish around the grass and structure or I can put on that Ned Locks jig head and get down deep and uh, work it really slow. Now in the winter time, I mentioned that a lot of the bait has moved offshore. Some of it's stuck around, some of the mullet and sometimes some minhaid. When it gets really cold, the water's in the 50s and whatnot, it tends to die off. I think this is a, a 17 MR mare lure and it looks a lot like this when those fish are dying. So it'll twitch up and then just kind of like be in the water column suspended, kind of twitch around, suspend. If you've ever seen, if you've looked in the water and see something dying or on the surface, this is a lot what that looks like. There's a lot of different kinds of these. This is a, a bigger Yozuri right here. A little more rattle to that. Um, that'd be good for a windy day. This is a, a smaller one, custom painted, um, Mayhem Fishing. I've got a link in the description. Really pretty color, looks like a, a darker mullet pattern. Here's another one, similar, kind of holographic, and this is a soft body one. Twitch bait, Dine, I think it's called, Paul Brown series. A combination between a hard bait and a soft bait, kind of unique, uh, used a lot in Texas. So those are a couple different styles of those. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about color. If it's really dirty water, I'm gonna move to something with some shiny holographic and bright colors. Like this right here, it's kind of chartreuse, green, got some orange in it. So this right here is just a little bit smaller, maybe closer to that glass minnow size. And I prefer this when the water's really cold and clear. I, I want something a little more natural looking. That also goes for my soft plastics, like the one I just covered. I want natural looking for clear water and I'll go more aggressive and more bright and vivid or really dark with that water clarity getting really murky and cloudy like it does here in Charleston. This right here is kind of subsurface. They usually work about one to three feet down a lot of them will have a very slow suspend or slow sink cast it out there you can let it, i like to let it fall a little bit in my target zone and then i'll just give it a couple really quick rats um, rod snip rod twitches like that let it sit there and a lot of times i'm trying to to count or at least keep in mind how long it's just sitting there and and idle and slowly maybe falling and then i'll just give it some erratic twitches again maybe three maybe two maybe one just um, kind of random but when that fish strikes as soon as it stops you can fish a little faster now if you're jerking it and then you're waiting 
you know, six seconds and then you hit it and then that fish strikes it, you got to really slow it down and give it more idle time than you are giving it jerk time. And just keeping in mind those different tempos and those cues of what the fish want and how they want it. So another one of my go-to, and it's been a go-to for years, is called the, the Finesse TRD. And this right here, I like to fish it on either jig head weed this, or this right here is again that same TRD style, sit on the sit on the head weight. There's not a bunch of like appendages and things, a lot of movement. Uh, it kind of just has like a little wiggle to it, and it's the right profile of just about everything. You're probably imitating a shrimp or a fish. This right here color is called Mud Minnow. It has a light color belly and a darker color top, just like the normal thing. It fits perfectly on their Nedlocks jig head, and when it goes to the bottom, it it falls and it lands right on its head. You give it a couple twitches and it just kind of moves and jiggles. And it's just enough movement that you can work it super slow while it still looks um, alive. It gets a lot of bites throughout the year, and especially here in the in the winter. And it's kind of got, it looks like it has some salt inside of it. Whatever the combination it is, it catches tons of fish. So those are their, the finesse TRDs. All right, one of the next things that I really enjoy throwing this time of year this right here is just called the Ease Shrimps. It's that same buoyant Elastec material. Once the water temperature gets a little bit lower, under 60s and whatnot, um, where the fish are pretty much only eating those really small baits, I'm gonna switch over to, this is the Salty Ned. These are just tiny two and a half inch, like micro shrimp. They look just like the, uh, the shrimp that's in the water here when it's really cold in the winter. I can either put this on that same um, exposed jig head or put this on that weedless hook. It looks just like the real thing, small, and when they're keyed in on that small grass shrimp, this is pretty much what you need. I like to put Procure on them. So the shrimp, I'm using this shrimp Procure, and then I'm going to use the inshore Procure for the uh, fish style baits. What I noticed this last couple times and when I have came back and reviewed my video after fishing in really cold water is that I'll be adjusting my rudder. I'll cast and I'll have my bait out there taking a drink of water and that's when I get a hit. So normally I'm probably working it too fast. I need to be casting it out there, letting it sink, letting it sit there for a while, letting these jig heads that sit like this, just let that do its thing, especially if it's scented. Uh, another thing to really mention about the winter time, I use the same rods, but I downgrade my leader a little bit to a 15 pound fluorocarbon. And I go from typically probably about um, 18 inches is my typical leader size but I end up going to about three feet. So I've got a much longer, clear leader. And because it's longer, it's gonna go up into my eyelids a lot of times when I'm casting. So I changed from a uni knot here to an FG knot. It's a more difficult knot to tie, but it's a very thin diameter knot that it'll feed in and out of your, your, uh, your, your eyelids super easily. Um, you'll get a little bit more bites that way because of that clear water so that they're not spooked by a big line and they're looking at it longer. So I've got that clear, longer leader. And then the hooks themselves are a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter wire. They penetrate really well. It's okay to have a thin wire hook and lighter gear because of the metabolism of these fish. They're gonna be a lot slower, slower in the water, slower when you're hooking into them and fighting them back to the boat. Now I just wanna mention a difference in the, sh the shrimp style and the paddle tail style. Um, now the paddle tail style, it's going to fish a lot, a lot better reeled in um, with some sort of a tempo than the shrimp. Um, so I'm going to use this as more of a search bait and the shrimp, I'm going to cast this and fish it pretty much exactly where it lands. So in the summertime, I'm skipping it a lot because it mimics those shrimp that are bubbling all over the place. I'll skip it into the zone and make the redfish think it's their idea to eat it. And this is not going to do well trolling or move fast because as soon as you move it fast it starts to twist and turn also a shrimp in the in the water isn't going to just move really fast it, it might jerk this way a couple jerks and then you know try to flee or get out of the water or whatnot but it's not covering a ton of ground so i'm fishing this only a few feet of where it basically landed and then i'm going to reel it in really fast and pitch it out somewhere again a lot of times i'm going to let it settle to the bottom let it sit for a while, count down, see if I can't get a strike on a count so, it, so I'm cued in on, on how long they want it still. I'll give it some twitches, let it sit back on the bottom. Another thing is when you're working these baits and you're working the bottom, 
whether a paddle tail or that shrimp bait, a lot of times I like to cast it out there, let it sit on the bottom. I can see my slack line moving, 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 stop moving, or I can feel it in my rod tip. And instead of using your reel to pull it in a little bit and maybe let it come off the bottom, you're gonna use your rod. You're going to pick up your rod tip and in the water, that bait is coming up. And then you're gonna bring it back down. You can, a lot of times with a good rod, good sensitive rod, like, uh, like this St. Croix here, you can feel that bottom and then you have a little slack in your line, you're gonna reel that slack in. And then you're gonna repeat that over and over. The problem is when you're reeling it in, you can't feel anything. So if you're just reeling over the bottom, it's really hard to feel the bottom. So I like to use the sensitivity of the rod tip to feel the bottom, feel the cover, and to work it really slow. And when you get a subtle bite, like a lot of times you do in the winter, then you're gonna feel it and you can set that hook. When I start out my trip, Often I'll throw some lures that are bright and aggressive and colorful. This right here is Purple Death. It's got purple and chartreuse. So just a three inch paddle tail, purple and chartreuse. Electric Chicken, it's always been a go-to trout bait, pink and chartreuse. And then this is a, a nuked chicken. And I'm gonna power fish them. I'm gonna just move a lot and see if I can't just get some aggressive fish. They can see these baits from a long way away. They have some drawing power. I'm gonna know pretty quickly and I'm gonna transition to my more subtle, smaller, natural looking baits and fish much, much slower. But I do like to start off by kind of power fishing and seeing if I can get away with something that's bright and loud and vivid. One of the last things that I really like in the winter and especially like late fall, early winter or late winter is gonna be a jerk bait. So this is like maybe water temperatures are like in the 60 degrees or, so what's great about a jerk bait is it's drawing power and you can fish it fast. So it's gonna go through the water and you can rip it really hard and it'll suspend, rip it really hard, it'll suspend. This one's custom painted again by Mayhem Fishing and uh, it's a called Wicked Wobbler, really bright pattern a lot of times I'll throw this first and then I'll step back to that natural color kind of like my selection with my other baits these have a time and place so I love fishing a jerk bait for trout on a nasty day so if it's spitting rain and it's windy and it's overcast and the water is kind of dirty and turbulent this is gonna be my go-to because it has that drawing power to cut through all that outside noise and commotion of the water and those fish are a lot of times are going to be fired up in those conditions those sea trout and so this is what i'm going to be throwing well i've got a big tackle box here full of stuff but i think in the winter that should just about cover what you need that kind of rounds up my my top winter baits you know i hope this video was really helpful to you guys uh, at least get you guys started and get you thinking about how your bait should be different in the winter time and how your gear can be different as well but the biggest thing is to downsize to slow down and to be super intentional about how you're working it and how long it's taking being idle for a fish to grab it. I just went out with a friend and we did well winter fishing on a smaller creek. Go check that video out right here and I'll see you there.